Greetings, friends, and welcome to yet another ministry of the Victory Hour here on YouTube. This YouTube channel is brought to you by the Lord's people at Clavel Assembly in Forfter, Rhode Island. My name is Jim Gallagher. I am the pastor at Clavel Assembly, and uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. Now, um, I'm I'm actually in a series on refuting different eras of dispensationalism, but we're taking a break uh, just for two days. I said, last time I made a, 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 video, a, a posting here on YouTube, I said we, we're going to take a break for two to four weeks. I misspoke when I said that. What I meant was two, uh, well, two to four victory hours. But four victory hours would only take up two weeks. We're not taking four. We're not taking a month off from covering dispensationalism. In fact, what we're going to do is we're just taking, um, well, three episodes off. We had the one last week. Now, so we're, we're anyway. Let me get back to where I was saying. We're we're covering the errors of dispensationalism, and we're taking them one by one and refuting them. Right now, we've been talking about the era of. The postponed kingdom. They say the kingdom was postponed. And I'm showing how that's false. Now, I've taken a break from that to explain something for you. And I started that explanation last time. And uh, what did I title it? Something like, uh, why we are shutting down the commentary section. Why we're shutting down the commentary section, part one, something like that. And this is going to be why we're shutting down the commentary section on our YouTube channel, part two. I'm going to finish those thoughts as to why. And then as a sort of part three of this series, but in, in a sense, it just stands on its own. I'm going to play a, um, uh, 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 I'm, going to, I'm going to post a sermon on YouTube this coming Thursday, the next YouTube. I'm going to post a sermon that I preached from the pulpit of Clayville Assembly. Well, actually, I haven't even preached it yet. I haven't even preached it yet. <laughs> I'm actually, for, for Monday's and Thursday's broadcast on here on YouTube, I'm making this on Saturday night. Well, tomorrow, the next day, I'm preaching this sermon on um, British Israelism. Because it was British Israelite nonsense, nonsensical trolls that were causing me to take a second look at keeping the commentary section open. Now, I'm not closing it because of British Israelism per se, because they got nothing going for them. I'm going to show you that. However, it did get me thinking about something I was leery about from the very beginning, and that is keeping the comment section open. And, you know, one of the complaints was, well, you cut down the, shut down the comment section as if the body of Christ can't regulate itself. Iron chopping iron. And, and so you just want to cut us off and you have all to say. I'm not cutting anybody off. You want to talk? Go ahead. But that doesn't mean you talk on this YouTube channel. You want to talk? Go ahead. Doesn't mean you come into my house and talk. I might not want to hear you. Now, Normally, and I said, you know what? I want to have the commentary section open. But it wasn't just uh, the British Israelites, but even there were some dispensational responses that were, uh, they technically weren't trolls per se. I, I wouldn't call them that. But they were kind of, you know, oh, you know, Pastor Gallagher, he doesn't know what he's talking about, must be a big dope, and this, 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 and this, and go check out this over here to oppose with Pastor Gallagher. And they're giving all this stuff. And as videos multiply on this YouTube channel, I can't take the time to answer everybody's objection. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. I didn't start off the YouTube channel to make it a social media outlet through which I converse with everybody. I don't have the time for that. It's just the facts of life. I don't have the time. Listen to the last posting here uh, on YouTube, and you'll, you'll hear me explain why I don't have the time. Makes sense. It's only so many hours in a day, and I'm a busy fellow. I want to do things for the Lord. I have obligations. So, but I am very forward to answer your questions. But I only want to answer those that come from sincere people that want to discuss it, not just use our YouTube channel as a platform 
to post their heresies, to undermine and contradict everything we're saying. I don't have to give those people a voice. The commentary section on this YouTube channel is discretionary, and it's up to us. I tried to do it, but I knew it would end up this way sooner or later. It's just uh, a little bit sooner than later, you know. And I like having the commentary section. Even the people that oppose me and are upset with me and they disagree with my doctrine, I like reading their comments because it gives me a feel for where the thinking of the people are at. When I see a common thread, it re I realize, okay, maybe I need to address that in a more formal way on, on some YouTube clips. And so I love that. It gives me subject matter. And of course, those that write or those that uh, submit comments that are encouraging and they're enjoying the ministry, of course, that's always nice as well, of course. And I'd love to maintain those, and we still can. My email address is info at claybillassembly.com. Info at, the symbol at, claybillassembly.com. You can email me. I don't get back to you like the, within a day or two. I don't. It'd probably take me a week or two. I'm busy. Listen to the last video. I'm not making excuses. It's just, I don't sit in my hands in the ministry. And I don't sit in my hands in my life. I got things to do. And one of the things I don't do is jump on social media and have a conversation with the whole world. I don't go to Facebook. I don't go to Twitter. I don't go to any of these places. So I'm just going to give you what I see God's word is saying. Do with it as you want. However. If you want help, you want spiritual guidance, you want some instruction, you want to complain about a doctrine, you may think I'm sincere, but I'm sincerely wrong, and you want to uh, state your case to me, you can. Info at claveassembly.com. So, what the, the passage of scripture that first caused me to gravitate towards this issue was Proverbs chapter 26. And I've been talking about Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 4 and 5. You know, in the first verse, I was, I was just looking at this when I sat down here. Um, the first verse of Proverbs 26, it says, As snow in summer and as rain in harvest. You know, snow in summer. Should I tell this story? Nah, why not? When I was a kid, it was me and my two brothers. My mother and father just had three boys, no, no sisters. The girls were like a foreign object to me. I didn't, I didn't know anything about them. Just two brothers. So when we were growing up and we were young, I'm going to say we were like six, something like that. Um, there was snow in the summer at our house. And we were in Situate, Rhode Island. Snow in the summer? Well, yeah, what happened was <laughs> I got the bright idea Let's make some snowballs, and we'll make a whole bunch of them, and we'll put them in a garbage bag, wrap them up, and put them in the chest freezer in the basement where my parents keep all the meat and stuff, and we'll bury it at the bottom so they don't discover it, because they'll take the meat and go from the top down. We'll unpack everything, put it in, put it back the way it was, and then when the summer comes, <laughs> we can take the bag out. We'll have snowballs. We can throw at cars. <laughs> now, we, sh we shouldn't have been doing that. I know that. Look, remember, Grandpa says, Boys will be boys. <laughs> we weren't looking to damage anything, but this is, a, this is a stupid idea. So we kind of forgot. We, we did that, and we kind of forgot that we put them in there. And then one day, it was probably like in the middle of July, I said, hey, remember we put that back in the freezer with the snowballs? Oh, yeah. So we went downstairs, opened up the freezer, went through all the meat, found the bag, took it out, had all these snowballs. And... Um, we take the snowballs out. Well, they're all sticking together. Well, they've almost become ice balls now. They're like ice. So we let them sit out in the hot summer air for a while, then they begin to get a little soft and mushy. And then <laughs> some guys are coming by, and we're throwing these mush balls. How stupid this was. We're throwing these mush balls at guys. And, you know, sometimes a guy would hit, on his, hit his brake, and you hit him, boom. And he'd hit his brake, and we go running, oh, hopefully he doesn't find out it's us. Now, we'd only done it several times, but then as we're hiding, the guy's stopping, hey, what's going on, you know? <laughs> I'm looking out from behind some trees. I say, wait a minute. All the snow is on the road right in front of our house. <laughs> we
We had no house to the left, no house to the right, no house across the street. It had to be us doing it. We were <laughs> it's so stupid. Fortunately, that guy didn't come knock out the door or anything, and he just went. I said, oh, we better get that snow off the road. And that was our escapade as, uh, you know, <laughs> five, six, and maybe seven-year-old boys uh, throwing snowballs at God in the summer. So I guess I was a fool. Okay, so Proverbs 26, 1. As snow in summer, like in front of my house, on Danielson Pike and Sitchit Round, when I was growing up, as snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, you don't see these things normally. So honor is not seemly for a fool. It's not seemly to have snow in the summer. And it is not seemly to give honor to a fool. I don't believe most people that are posting in our comment section, even the ones that have opposition to what I'm saying, I don't believe the vast majority of them are fools. I don't think that at all. However, there are a few fools, and it's apparent by just reading their postings. I don't mean they're fools because they have ooh, these hard arguments that can't be answered. No, no, no. It's what they're saying how they say it, and how they think everybody else is going to think, oh, those are good points. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor if not seemly for a fool. You don't give honor to a fool, is what Solomon's saying. And that's why I've got to yank the comment section. We're not going to, we're not going to use our YouTube channel at Clavel Assembly as a means to give a platform to people to undermine the doctrines and the biblical truths that we will teach in this outlet. We're not trying to shut anybody's mouth. But again, I don't have to give you a microphone. Go get your own microphone. You want to espouse your views? Make your own YouTube channel. Show a little initiative, will you? See where that goes, all you British Israelites. So I'm not shutting this down because of British-Israelite arguments are so difficult. No, no, no. So I'm going to talk more about why we're shutting it down today. And then on Thursday, the next posting, I'm going to post a sermon that I'm actually going to be preaching tomorrow at Clayville. Because as I'm making this, tomorrow is Sunday. And I'm going to be posting a sermon from Clayville that I will be preaching on the subject matter of British-Israelism. All you need is one one-hour sermon. That's what we're going to have Thursday. It'll be an hour sermon up here or something like an hour. Maybe 50 minutes or we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do a series on British Israelism. It doesn't deserve it, but I will do a posting. And the comment section will disappear. And anybody that wants to contact me, Clavel Assembly, no, info at clavelassembly.com. Info at clavelassembly.com. Our website is just clavelassembly.com. www.clavelassembly.com. Want to contact me? It's info at clavelassembly.com. Make sense? So that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, the, the verse that got my attention is, is verses 4 and 5. We talked about this last week, so I'm not going to belabor it. Uh, Solomon says, Answer not a fool according to his folly. He doesn't say, he isn't saying never answer a fool. What he's saying is there are times when you shouldn't answer a fool. How do I know whether or not to answer him? Well, it's according to his folly, dependent upon what he's saying. And it's going to require a little critical judgment there. I understand that. But he says, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. He's just going to talk gibber and nonsense that nobody for a moment is going to get sucked into. And don't even answer. I, and I could live with that. I wouldn't have to close down the comment section if that's all I, that I did. However, there's another obligation. The next sentence, verse 5. And now in verse 4, he says, Answer not a fool according to his folly. Now in verse 5, he says, Answer a fool according to his folly. 
that a contradiction? Does verse 5 contradict verse 4? No. What he's saying is, answer a fool according to his folly. You have to judge the nature of his foolishness. And there are times that his foolishness, to a certain degree, not all of it, but there are aspects of it that need to be answered, lest others be deceived, and to help that person himself. Just because a person's a fool doesn't mean, mean he doesn't deserve some grace and help. That person can be regenerated. He'll no longer be a fool. He'll take on the mind of Christ. So we're told, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So I got to thinking, not so much about the British Israelites, but in this just this series generally on dispensational errors. Uh, people just, you know, I, I, I knew. Before I opened the, before I had the first posting on this YouTube channel, I knew I'm going to get lots of flack because everybody and their brother is dispensational now amongst conservative Bible believing, you must be born again Christians. Well, dispensationalism is Johnny come lately and it's error. So I know I'm taking on the, the world here. So I, I didn't have a problem with that. The people are going to post negative things and disagree. Fine. But you know, uh, you know, you, 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 you I should have known this. I did know it, but I just gave it a shot. I, you know, looking at social media, which I don't join it, but you know, sometimes you read an article, then you read the comments from social media, Twitter, or whatever posting they have, these chat rooms, and people are just, they're nasty, they're illogical, they're manipulative in their argumentation. And it can hurt some people. Now, it won't hurt a lot of people. They'll be wise enough to say, no, no, don't get involved with that. But there's some people that just don't have the wherewithal at this point in their war to turn away from that. And I don't want to bring people to this YouTube channel to give them the truth and then hand them over to the enemy but have to have it be undermined before it can even take root. They'll have the rest of their life of people trying to undermine it. If you want to be a Berean, then you need to search the scriptures to see whether these things be so, which means you've got to give it a chance and say, have I been looking at this scripture through the wrong lens, or the wrong paradigm? Is what this fellow is saying true? Do I need to look at it from his perspective and give it a fair hearing? And then once you get a fair hearing and you understand trying to put yourself in those shoes, does it match scripture or does it contradict scripture? But what Christians usually do, they're not good Bereans. They don't search the scriptures to see whether they be so. They search the scriptures to find their proof text which they take out of context to refute the new idea that they want to shoot down without ever giving it a fair hearing. And that is how most social media and comment sections are used. It's just not going to be here. But my motivation goes beyond Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 5. That's fundamental. Is what got me thinking about it. But there's more to it than that. Remember, all these naysayers, they can get their own YouTube channel. They want to contact me an email, you can. But like I said the other time, last time, if I get trolls on my email, I'm not going to answer those. I don't have to worry about answering those because they can't deceive anyone else. The email, email comes to me. So don't waste your time if you're going to be a troll. Trolls and bots and the whole rest of the lot. And then there's the other people that I'd love to be able to help. And hopefully, preaching from the word will help many. And those that need a little extra help, you can contact me. Info at claveassembly.com. Maybe a time I'll regret this. A few years down the road, too many people emailing me and I won't be able to control my email. <laughs> well, I'll have to cross that bridge when I come to it. I'll just change my email address and say, look, I can't do that anymore. You have to write me a letter. I keep making it harder and harder. So only people truly motivated, called of God, and that are seeking the truth, or that want to genuinely help me and be a good Christian, only they will contact me. Well, you know, in a sense, that's all I'm interested in. I don't have time to do more than that. And that's according to God's providence in my own life and the call he's placed on me. All right, so 
look, there's other passages of scripture. Let's look at a few. Um, other than Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 5. That's causing me to do this. Second Timothy chapter 4. Now, Second Timothy chapter 4. Now, Second Timothy 4, this is a passage of scripture we all know very well as Christians. Uh, well, most Christians know it very well. Second Timothy 4, and starting at verse 1. And there's a context to this. I can't get into the whole context, but there's just a singular principle. So Paul is saying to Timothy, who is a minister of Christ, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. By the way, who shall judge, uh, the Greek word mellow, it's who is about to judge, who is about to judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Oh, that can't be. Oh, but it is. But that's another series. Preach the word, Paul says to Timothy. Be instant in season when it's popular. Out of season when it's not popular. You be faithful to the truth, whether it's popular or not popular. You preach it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. That is the minister's obligation. That is my obligation. Now, I'm not preaching to Clayville Assembly here. I'm preaching to the people at large that tune into YouTube. And I'm ministering the word. So on this venue, I have a responsibility to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. If I'm going to teach the truth, I need to defend it. I don't have to worry about that if the comment section is gone. I don't have to take on that responsibility. I can't preach to the whole world and answer the whole world. Let the answers be in the ministry and in the preaching. Individual help when it's prudent, I will engage in to the degree that my time will allow it. So the minister has a word. If he preaches the word, then he needs to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. You say, well, the context is for the body of Christ. That's true. But does not the body of Christ that may disagree with me on some of these things? Aren't they responding to me? Yes, they're not in our assembly. They're not in my assembly at Clayville Assembly. But they're part of the body of Christ. And I feel a moral obligation to answer them when they're asking questions. That's how I'm built. I'm a minister, which means a servant. And I have to be realistic. I didn't come on YouTube to have engage in nonstop social interaction, even theological. I didn't do that. I came to preach the word. And then you do with it what you want. Is that fair? I would think so. But see, I have an obligation. Reprove, rebuke, and exalt with all long-suffering and doctrine. And in that, as I said in the last video, uh, in that I, um, I work a full-time, secular full-time job. I'm a full-time minister. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I got a family. I ain't only so many hours in a day. You got to admit, that's a lot of stuff to do. Got my own house, got to mow my own grass, maintain my own home, help with the brethren, maintain the building at Clayville, and all the responsibilities I have. And I'm 63 years old. I can only be spread so thin. And the truth is, God's Spirit will lead his people if they approach him in sincerity and in truth, which Many don't, but they claim to do so. Let's go to another text, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 23. Really, 23 to 26. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Well, see, foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Well, that's Proverbs 26.4. Answer not a fool according to his folly. When his folly doesn't demand it of your conscience, don't answer him. Just let him go. Don't get in a stupid argument on a stupid point that nobody's going to believe except this guy. Right? So, foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Well, that's easy. Yeah, I can do that. I can let it. They can say, oh, they can insult me all they want. It doesn't bother me. And uh, verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, 
participation, and social media arguments do not lend themselves to that, do they? We've lost the ability in our country, it seems, to have civil discourse of an honorable nature. When we disagree, we've lost the ability to have civil discourse. See, that makes the whole concept of the commentary section very, very difficult. Morally, for me. Then verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that ye may recover them, that they may be recovered, they, they, I'm sorry, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So notice the responsibility of the minister of God and the teacher of God's word. In meekness, he must instruct those who oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now that requires we address their issues. Which I do at Clavel. And I do through preaching the word to everybody. And now, if I want to take on individual people from all around the world that have questions for my YouTubes, let them email me. It's an extra step and most won't do it. Those that take that extra step, I'm going to do everything I can to try and answer your questions. Time-wise. I don't mean... Like, uh, if I can answer them, I just not what I mean. I mean, time-wise, it's, it's time-consuming. And to give long theological answers by email is just terrible. It's a lot faster to talk on the phone, have, a, 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 you know, a discussion. But, you know, in this venue, that's, you know, you can't do that. So we have to be careful. So we have a responsibility to help people, see? You can't help them if you shut them down. Yes, I can. They won't monopolize the subject matter. I don't have to wade through all the phonies and the hijackers who just want to ride our coattails. And if the people that actually mean business can email me, there's no problem. It's all good. See? Let me give you another one. Um, Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, starting at verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless. A bishop... The pastor, the elders, presbyter, the overseer. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine nor striker, not given to filthy lucre, money, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Now verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You know what a gainsayer is? A gainsayer is someone who contradicts everything you're teaching. They're just contrarian, a person who's contradicting what the teacher is saying and just opposing them at every level. That's a gainsayer. So, Paul says to Titus, another minister of Christ, sent out by Paul, he says, hold fast the faithful word, uh, This min the minister, the bishop, needs to hold fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort the gainsayers in the commentary section and convince the gainsayers in the commentary section. Well, there's too many gainsayers. Most people are just asking sincere questions or just opposing me and upset with me, but I don't. I see them as people I'd love, love to answer, and they deserve answering. But there's a good segment that's not in that category, and they're just troublemakers, and who needs them? And why should I allow those people to undermine the more sincere people, even the sincere people that don't agree with me? They can be undermined by these people's arguments. Why should I give that voice? If the people listening to me are true Bereans and have questions or are, are upset and they want to raise a point for my benefit and the benefit of the people I teach as a good Christian, then contact me, info at clavelassembly.com. <laughs> well, can I fulfill this obligation on a YouTube commentary section? No, I can't. I'm one man. I can't do it. 
I know you may have all sorts of ministers just go and they don't, they don't respond. Well, good for them, but you know, my conscience bothers me about that because of these verses. You can't fault me for my conscience being tender as to my responsibilities in the ministry, can you? For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. <laughs> yes, there are. Especially they of the circumcision. Whose mouths must be stopped. Well, I'm going to stop it. Commentary section. Unplugged. What happened to my light? Seems like I'm going dark. What is that all about? Okay. I just noticed. Now, let me see if I can increase my lighting here. You know what? I got another light here. Hold on. It's like I'm going shadow. I wasn't looking at, not looking at myself. I got a screen over here. I can see myself. Let me try this. Oops. Wrong one. <laughs> all right. That's that. Well, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> try just my lighting. Maybe it's all right. Let me try this. I got another one here. There we go. Now, that ain't going to help us on the wrong side. All right. We'll live with it. I think it, you know what it is? Hold on. I think it's the sun. See this sun? It's coming in the window. Hey! See how this works. Does that help? Oh, it does help. Not that anybody wants to see me, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, let me give you another text here. Uh, Jude. Jude. The book of Jude. Oh, see, I'm out of time. Uh, Jude. It's not like I'm still doing radio, where the strict time. Let's go to Jude. Jude, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. True. <laughs> but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone the, in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perish in the gainsaying. Here's that word again. The contrarians who just want on to cut you that perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Remember Korah and his crowd went to Moses and said, hey, who do you think you are? You make too much of yourself and Aaron. You know, all the people are holy, not just you. We can determine God's will as much as you can. What say ye, Moses? Moses says, well, I'll tell you what. Well, he didn't quite say it this way. But he says, I'll tell you what. We'll gather together and meet tomorrow, and we'll see who's holy. And of course, the next day, the Lord opened up the earth and Korah and his family and his servants and everything he owned and his home all went down and the earth swallowed them alive, we're told. The gainsaying of Korah. Well, the Lord did not keep the commentary section open on Moses' YouTube account. He closed that commentary section when he opened up the mouth of the earth and they swallowed, the Lord swallowed the gainsayers. Well, I can't have the earth open up for me unless the Lord wants to do it. But uh, I'll swallow up the trolls by just pulling them mic. And that's what we're doing. You know, just to round things out here, go to Matthew chapter 10, because I'm out of time. I think this is enough explanation for this. I think you get the point. Can't we all agree social media stinks as far as the, the back and forth banter? It's horrible. People are mean-spirited. You know, the guy gets so, so violent and vicious when he's online. But if you cross some line that he blows up on online but instead that line is crossed say when you're, in the, when you're in the line at the grocery market and he's standing right there and you're standing right there oh no nothing happens guys become tough guys when they get behind 5,000 pound vehicles driving the road giving you the finger cutting you off they stand toe to toe with you they keep their mouths shut don't they look this is the world and it's just We've lost our sense of moral direction. 
What happened to the responsibilities of, of honor, duty, respect for another person? Even though you might disagree with another person, you still, you still owe them uh, proper respect. They're, they're people created in the image of God. We've lost our way as a culture. We truly, truly have. Oh, I didn't even read Jude 3 and 4. Oh, I get, I'll read Matthew here in a minute. Just let me, I'll do this quick. I wanted to read this. Jude, verse 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, trolls, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, yep, turning the grace of God, our God, into lasciviousness. Well, that is British Israelism. They turned the grace of God of the gospel into an ethnocentric perversion of the definition of Israel. They, they insert themselves into the picture. They've crept in unawares, and they turn the grace of God through the salvation by God's grace through faith to all men, not just the British, the Americans. <laughs> Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Yeah. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But notice, we have an our responsibility as, as teachers and ministers to earnestly contend for the faith and to oppose those men that creep in. Um, I don't do that by giving them a voice. They can speak. They can speak to me. They can speak to you. But they don't have to come into our pulpit. On our microphone, which we dedicate for serving the Lord as best we can see the truth in God's word, and then let them undercut everything we do. It's just not going to happen. It really should never happen. Now, if we're going to teach and exhort God's people, we do so by teaching them the word. We teach them the truth. We teach and we train them in the truth so they can defend themselves. You don't answer, well, how can you believe this? Well, Pastor Gallagher says, no, you don't say Pastor Gallagher says. You bring them to the word. That's where your argument comes from. My job is to teach the word, to preach the word, be in sin and in season and out of season. So we prepare God's people by teaching the truth. We prepare God's people sometimes, or we help God's people against these wolves. Because the look, I didn't read Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 16. That's what I forgot to read. I'm going to close with this thought. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send... Now, he's speaking to his disciples, but there's a principle here. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Understand. People, Jesus said, the people are like sheep. Sheep need protection. That's part of the job of a shepherd. Sometimes the shepherd has to go out and fight the wolf. Now he, he can try and prepare the sheep to defend themselves best they can. But the truth is, they'll they'll take it so far. But there are times when the um, Shepherd has to step in and fight the wolf himself. Now, when it comes to social media and the world's trolls coming in, because I'm preaching very unpopular doctrine, I know that. Um, and they want to just undercut everything I'm saying and link you to stuff that's nonsense that will sound like it makes sense. You need to be a Berean and hear what I'm saying. And then after the fact, you go and hold it up to Scripture. Not as I'm teaching it, this guy's yakking your ear. Blah, 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 blah. And that's not what we do. So what about when there's too many wolves? One shepherd, but you've got a whole pack of wolves. You've got a dozen of them coming from each side. You can't fight all of them coming from every side, can you? No, you're going to be overwhelmed. You don't have the time to fight with them. You could fight them individually, but you don't. This is how they come. This is social media. So what you do is you build a fence around the sheep. And the wolves present no problem to the flock of God. So we build a fence around the sheep. How do we do that? We pull the plug on the commentary section. 
And anybody that's outside the fence that says, oh, what's going on in there? That can't be true. Hey, can you help me? Because what you're saying doesn't make sense. What about this over here? And I see, hey, they are asking a question sincerely. I don't, if they, they want to come in, I want to be able to let them in. I got to make sure they're safe and they're not actually a wolf in sheep's clothing. And so we talk. But that's only between sincere people. I'm sorry, that's the way that it is in this day and age. And um, The only other way I can keep the wolves out is ask the Lord to open up the earth and swallow them all. <laughs> and uh, my guess is the Lord's not going to do that, so we're doing this. And I hope you understand. We love all you that tune in and, and you're desirous of the truth, even those that disagree with me. Hey, you dispensationalists, I want you to keep listening. If you want to uh, take an issue with me, please do. Email. Email me, info at claybellassembly.com. But don't let it be just over frivolous stuff. If you're serious, like maybe I've jarred you and some, because I don't have time to just answer every technical nuance of every half interested person. You know, I, I won't be able to do that. So if I'm saying things that jar you and they like, whoa, can that be true? No, it can't be. And so you ask a question you think I can't answer because now like, well, so what do you say to that? That's the kind, exactly the kind of person I want to help. Don't you be afraid. Info at claveallassembly.com. And those kind of people, I'm glad you've come to this channel. The wolves, I'll put some rat poison outside. Maybe that'll do the trick. This is Jim Gallagher. Now next, now next time, I'm going to post a sermon on British Israelism. Whew. It's nasty. Jim Gallagher, reminding you in the words of our blessed Lord and Savior, you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free.